Hello and welcome. Uh, we are continuing uh, with our history from two. But this time around, now we are going to look at the uh, European expansion. European expansion. So on this one, we will be looking at the voyages of exploration or the voyages of discovery. The voyages of discovery. Now, in this topic, this is one of the good, good topics that we are going to look at. Now, in this topic, we are going to look at the now the Europeans, they started uh, to embark on the sea, uh, sea journeys, the long sea journeys. So in this topic, we're going to look at the, uh, how they, uh, they managed that. What were the factors that resulted into, uh, into these journeys? And who were the people who participated in these journeys? And which were the countries that supported them? What were the results again? What were the results of these discoveries? For example, we are going to look at the countries like Portugal, Spain, and England. Now, what were the results of uh, the journeys of different people? So we are going to look at how they traveled or even some of the, uh, the problems that they faced, some of the things that facilitated their moves to reach their destinations. So we are going to look at a lot of things and the, the discoveries that they made. And all in all, we are going to look at the, the general impact now or the general results of this topic that is the voyages of discovery. So let's be together as we uh, go together on this uh, very, very wonderful topic on the voyages of discovery. Now, when we talk of the voyages of discovery, when we just say voyages of discovery, uh, we say uh, or we refer to a long or the long journeys at sea in which Europeans uh, began to explore the world. The long journeys at the sea uh, in which the Europeans, they began to explore the world. So the voyages of exploration or the voyages of discovery came about uh, because uh, the Europeans were looking uh, for a way to reach the spice-rich uh, lands of Asia. So here, that's why you have to take note uh, here to say uh, the Europeans, they wanted to reach uh, Asia because there were a lot of spices that were uh, coming from there. So they wanted to reach there and see if they can start be trading uh, on the sea route using the sea uh, in the trade of spices. Now let us look at the factors. What were the factors that made the voyages of discovery possible? Number one is the map making. Map making. So the making of maps gave the sellers advantage or advanced knowledge of uh, the location of uh, the areas they were going uh, they were going to. So uh, the maps uh, that were already there, that they were developed, then it gave them an advantage on the knowledge of where they were going. And also advances in ship design, advances in ship design. The strong uh, ships called the carvels, they developed the strong ships that were called the carvels. So these ones, they enable them to withstand the storm at, at the sea. So they built those uh, carvels uh, that were able to withstand the, uh, the sea storm. And also the carvels would move in any direction regardless the direction of the wind. For example, the wind is coming from this direction and uh, maybe uh, the same direction is where the ship was going. Then uh, these carvels, they could find no any problem they could fight against the wind and go uh, towards where the wind is coming from. And also the invention of the compass, the invention of the compass. So the compass enabled the sailors to go out into the sea without getting lost. So other technical aids for a successful voyage were uh, elite, uh, that is 
used to measure the depth and chronometer uh, used to measure time. So uh, they had a lead and chronometer. So a lead, it was used to measure the depth of the sea and chronometer used to measure the time. Now, let us look at the reasons. Here we are looking at the reasons why, uh, the reasons why these uh, voyages of discoveries uh, started or uh, in the uh, 15th century. Why it started in the 15th century. So uh, when we talk of the voyages of discoveries, basically uh, they started in the 15th century. So here we are going to look at the reasons why, why it started in the 15th century. Number one uh, was the invasion of for, uh, Eastern Europe by the Turks. That one, uh, it had cut off the land routes from Europe to east, uh, to the east. Hence, the alternative route uh, was to uh, was to use uh, the sea. Yes, so what we are saying is that in the Eastern Europe, the Turks, they had cut all the routes. As a result, there was nothing like a, uh, to go through, uh, to penetrate into uh, the East. So with that, then the European countries, they embarked, they wanted now to find other routes. Therefore, the only way was to use the sea. And number two, many Europeans, they, uh, wanted to increase their knowledge on the extent and the composition of the earth. So Europeans, they wanted to have knowledge of uh, the earth, how it was made up. And also the merchants, they wanted to benefit from the trade in the, uh, in the products that came from uh, the East, uh, such as silk and uh, spices. Now, also, uh, the industrial, the industrial revolution in uh, Europe created a demand for raw materials and more market for the finished products. So this encouraged explorations to find the raw materials and discover new markets for the finished uh, products. So we talk of the industrial revolution. It created a demand for raw materials and more market. So we see to it that the in Europe, that's where industrial revolution started. Therefore, with that then, there was need. There was great need to find raw materials uh, to produce, uh, to uh, manufacture things, and thereafter to find also the market. So the Europeans, they also wanted to find the market for the raw materials as well as the, the finished products. And also the missionaries wanted to spread Christianity uh, in Muslim and pagan countries. So we see to it that there was also the uh, the quest to to spread Christianity in where the in the areas where uh, the there was paganism and uh, Islam and also the new inventions such as mariners compass made it easier to travel long distance at sea. So they also discovered the mariners compass. So that one it enabled people to enter to enter deep into the sea without getting lost they were even keeping in mind to say where they came from uh, the direction from where they are, they came from so they could easily record all those things so uh, that enabled them to uh, travel better in or at the sea so portugal became the first country uh, Portugal was uh, the first country uh, to embark on the voyages of discovery. So let us look at the reasons. What were the reasons why Portugal, why Portugal became the first country to engage in the voyage of discoveries? Number one is geographical position, the geographical position of uh, Portugal. So geographical position of Portugal is ideal for visiting the African coast, which was key to finding the sea route uh, to the east. Now, uh, when we talk of Portugal, it is like uh, we have our Africa here. Let me just draw a very small map of Africa. Then uh, we have the Mediterranean Sea here. It, it does like this. Uh -huh. Now, Portugal is somewhere here. That's where Portugal is. Uh, Portugal is uh, not very far uh, from Africa. Portugal is here, 
just as we uh, go to the Mediterranean Sea here, then Portugal is here. So Africa is here. So it meant that Portugal, we are saying that Portugal is near Africa, uh, which is here. And I could easily uh, travel to Africa here, then uh, to the east. Because the aim was to find a route to the east. We have said that the Turks they blocked this route to the east because uh, they were Muslims and they, they did not want the trade of other people to pass through uh, this region. So they wanted to find still the route to the east. So Africa, we are saying that Africa was near. Therefore, it was easy for them to come to Africa and just move along the coast, along the coast as they want to travel to the east. So that is the point that we are making uh, here. So uh, you have to understand it uh, in, in that way. Now, uh, number two is peace, peace and stability. Peace and stability. Uh, Portugal had no competitors because other nations uh, like Britain and France were fighting uh, the 100 years of war, that is from 1337 AD to uh, 1453 uh, AD. There was war there, they engaged in those wars, uh, Britain and France. So while Spain was also busy driving out the Moorish, that is the Muslim tax, uh, who invaded the southern part of Spain. So Portugal, uh, there was peace in Portugal, that's what we are talking about here. We say we are saying that in Portugal people were living peacefully because Britain and France they were engaged in the war and, and uh, Spain was also busy driving out the Turks or the Muslims or the Muslim Turks. So uh, that one then it gave chance to Portugal to embark on the voyages of discovery. And the other factor is the advances in marine time, maritime, maritime technology. So Portuguese scientists invented the compass. Uh, or astrolabe and the quadrant and these instruments they were used to measure the stars the sun and this made the sailors able to uh, tell their position even when they are out of sight so the uh, the instruments such as uh, that we are talking uh, about uh, that is the astrolabe the compass and the like they were able to use those uh, tools even they were far away uh, from home even they could not see the coast they are deep inside the sea but they could easily trace where they were going and where they are coming from and also the fine ships the portuguese invented the ships called the carvel we mentioned the carvel which could withstand the storms so with that they were able to travel well another factor is uh, uh, the influence the influence of Prince Henry, uh, the navigator, he was called the navigator himself, Prince Henry. So Portugal was encouraged uh, by Prince Henry, who set up the school of navigation and support uh, uh, to support uh, and support uh, the voyage of discovery. So Henry was the son of King John. Uh, the king of Portugal. So he was an outstanding scholar himself, uh, Prince Henry, and deeply affected by the spirit of renaissance, the rebirth of learning. So he was deeply affected to know more, to know more. So with that then, he opened up a school of navigation, which was uh, supporting uh, the, uh, the explorers. Now, what role did Prince Henry, the navigator, uh, play? So let us look at the role of Prince Henry, the navigator. So number one, he spent his time planning the voyages for uh, the sea captains. And also, he used his wealth to finance the voyages for his captains. Not only that, but he also consulted experts and collected information, maps, charts, um, <clears throat> marina's compass, the quadrants, that is the instrument that is used to measure the angle of stars at night in preparation for the uh, voyage. So he consulted the experts to look at that. Uh, he was not just doing it on his own. So he opened that school and he was busy consulting the experts as well on how best to, uh, uh, to go on the sea voyage. 
and also he established the observatory school of navigation at the at place called Sagas in Portugal. So the school uh, was to train sailors to use uh, the use of maps and the compass. So mainly the school that he opened, it was the school uh, that was training the people or the camp, the captains on how to use the compass and the maps. But what were his aims? What were the aims of Prince Henry the Navigator? Number one, he wanted to gain more land for Portugal. So he supported the people to go to or to embark on sea voyages in order for Portugal to gain more land. You know, Portugal is not a very big country. It's not a much different with our Malawi. It is a, a very, very small country, Portugal. So uh, Prince Henry the Navigator, he wanted again to gain more land for Portugal. And also he wanted to spread the gospel in non-Christian lands. He wanted to spread Christianity. And he also wanted to develop trade with other countries. And also, he wanted to know more about the world and encouraged exploration to satisfy his curiosity. So he wanted to know more how the world is made. Is Portugal the only land? No. So he wanted to explore more. So to satisfy his curiosity, he supported that navigation or exploration. Now we are going to look at the Portuguese the Portuguese attempts to find the sea route to India. We are going to look at the Portuguese attempts to find the sea route to India. So we'll start by looking at the notable Portuguese explorers. Who are these explorers, the Portuguese explorers? Number one, we talk of Diego Cam. Diego Cam. So he was the first European uh, known to reach the mouth of Congo River. So he was the first European, non-European, to reach the mouth of the Congo River, where the Congo River uh, flows into, uh, into the Atlantic Ocean. And the second one is Bartholomew Diaz. Bartholomew Diaz. So the king of Portugal is, uh, sent Bartholomew Diaz to find the sea route to India. So he set off for India in 1486, 1486, and he sailed straight to the river Congo where Diego Cam uh, had, uh, had stopped. So he sailed to the south, southmost tip of Africa where his ship nearly sank because of the storms. So because of this, uh, Bartholomew Diaz, he called that place the Cape of Storms, the Cape of Storms. However, the king of Portugal renamed the place Cape of Good Hope because uh, he was sure uh, that the way to India uh, lay ahead since the point uh, of the coastline turned north. So after reaching the Great Fish River, Bartholomew Diaz was forced to turn back by his crew uh, because his crew had feared to continue with the journey. So understand this one well now. So what happened was that uh, he reached the southernmost, the tip uh, in South Africa there. Uh, like uh, if we draw, uh, we have a simple map here of uh, Africa again. Mm. Yeah. So what we are talking of Bartholomew Diaz, uh, what he did was that he reached the, uh, the tip here, the tip of, uh, of uh, Africa, the southern tip of Africa here. And he named that one the Cape of Storms. He named it the Cape of Storms. But the king of Portugal, uh, he named it the Cape of Good Hope. Even up to now, it is called the Cape of Good Hope. The reason was that, well, uh, from Portugal here, it was like people, they wanted to go to the east, but the land here in Africa, it was just like going down, 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 down. So it was like endless because no one has ever used this route downwards. But when the uh, Bartholomew Diaz reached here, uh, he named the Cape of Storms. But it was named the Cape of Good Hope because now the land was turning to the north, having that hope to sail now. It, if it is turning to the north, we have that hope of reaching the east. So that's why the king named it the Cape of Good Hope because there was hope of reaching the eastern side.
So you have to understand it uh, in that way uh, that it was named the Cape of Good Hope. The other one is Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama. So uh, his aim was to finish the work of Bartholomew Diaz in finding a, a route to a sea route to India. So he was the first explorer to reach India. So Vasco da Gama, he was the first explorer to reach India. So he set from Lisbon, Lisbon, the capital city of Portugal. So he set off from Lisbon on 8th July 1897 with three ships that were named St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and Perio. So he sailed through the Atlantic Ocean for 96 days, 96 days, and was out of sight uh, of land when he finally reached uh, St. Helena Bay. So we see to it that he was deep into the Atlantic Ocean without being seen for 96 days. How was that possible? Remember the Marina's Campus? the quadrant and many others they were using that one to sail in the sea so with that then uh, he was not even worried to say right i know where i'm coming from and the direction that i'm heading to i know it so until he reached saint helena then he was on the land after 96 days he then uh, rounded the cape of good hope and landed at moseo bay so he reached where Bartholomew Diaz returned. So you can see to it, Diego Cam reached, uh, reached Congo, he went back. And Bartholomew Diaz, he reached the Cape of Good Hope, he returned. And uh, this one now, uh, Vasco da Gama, he proceeded from where uh, Bartholomew Diaz uh, returned until he landed at Moselle Bay. And on Christian or Christmas Day, that is in 1918, uh, in 1497, uh, he named the land he had passed through Natal. Natal meaning Beth, meaning Beth. So uh, today we call it KwaZulu Natal. It was uh, Vasco da Gama who named that area Natal because in Portuguese it means Beth. So it was uh, the birthday of Christ, the Christmas day. Next, he passed through uh, Mozambique Channel to Kwerimani, then Mozambique proper and Malindi. There, he found a, pi a pilot or a sea captain uh, named Ahmed bin Majid, Ahmed bin Majid, who assisted him to reach India. So, items purchased by Vasco da Gama when he reached India were cinnamon, pepper, ginger and cloves so he managed to reach india so it was a big success there a big success just as we have been saying to say that uh you know africa our africa is here map of africa roughly and if you know uh, there's arabia here and india somewhere here so as we have said portugal somewhere here uh, after uh, the mediterranean sea there then, usually, trade to, uh, with the Indians, it was uh, like uh, in that way. But it was blocked by the Turks, just as we have said. So they wanted to find the, the other means to reach India. So when Vasco da Gama reached this India, it was a big, a big success to, uh, to the Portuguese as well as the Europeans who had reached there uh, successfully. So we see to it that it was a success reaching India uh, there. So uh, they reached India and they found the, uh, the spices that they were looking for. Another one is Pedro, Pedro Avares Cabro. Pedro Avares Cabra. So he climbed the Bahia region of Brazil for Portugal. So we see Pedro, he went uh, to the western side and he claimed Brazil for uh, Portugal. So what were the difficulties, however, that were encountered by the Portuguese voyages of discovery? Number one, contrary currents that delayed the voyages to India. So uh, they were fighting with the waves or the currents. As a result, uh, it delayed their, uh, their journeys to India and also the need to wait for favorable winds. So they were taking long time to uh, wait for the sea to come down. 
and also the storms that led to the shipwrecks and even death of sailors. So as they were fighting against the ship, they were also finding uh, their, their ships were being broken down. As a result, uh, there were death of sailors and uh, the ships were destroyed. And also the absence of safe and accessible harbors in the west coast of Africa. So in Africa, as they were moving, they could not find the good harbors where they could stop and uh, put their ships. So it was a, uh, a, a difficult or a problem again. And untimely death of Prince Henry, the, the navigator who also funded, uh, who funded the sailors. So Prince Henry, the navigator, uh, he died before he became the king. And with that then, uh, uh, it was a problem because it was him who had that passion to support uh, the sailors to, uh, to find more other lands. Let us look at the results. What were the results of the Portuguese voyages of exploration? Number one, we are going to look at the positive results. So the first one is the, the sea route to India was discovered. So that was a positive one. And trade in spices expanded and brought a lot of wealth to Portugal. Number three, we are saying the entire coastline of Africa was mapped accurately and became well known to the Europeans because now they were moving in the coast of Africa. Therefore, that area, it was well, well mapped. It was well mapped and well known to the uh, Europeans. And Christianity spread to the coast of East Africa and the India. So we see to it that Christianity also uh, spread up to uh, from East Africa to India as well. And settlement of Portuguese along the East Coast and uh, in the interior of Africa. So the Portuguese also, they found settlement again uh, in the coast of Africa, East Coast, as well as into the interior of Africa. But there were also negative results. What were the negative results of the uh, voyages of discovery uh, by the Portuguese? The negative one is the, the Portuguese promoted slave trade in West and East Coast of Africa. So they promoted uh, slave trade. The Portuguese, when they reached uh, Africa, they promoted slave trade. And also they destroyed Arab civilization in East Coast. That is the land of the Zanji after conquering the coastal states. When we come to Form 3, we are also going to talk about the Portuguese, uh, how they settled in East Africa, how they conquered the people who were there, the land of the Zanji. It was uh, occupied by the Arabs who intermarried with the blacks and or with the Africans, and uh, they produced the new culture which was called the, uh, uh, the Swahili, the Swahili culture. So the coming of the Portuguese, they destroyed that civilization there in the East Coast. And also the Portuguese exploited Africa and Asia of their resources. For example, gold, ivory, spices, human resources, that is in form of slaves. So they exploited all those things. And also they promoted conflict among the indigenous people that led to hatred and tribal wars due to the presence of guns they had paid in exchange for goods. So in the trade that the Portuguese introduced with the Africans, they brought in, they were exchanging in for guns. So those guns brought in uh, some conflicts. There were tribal wars as a desired conflict where the order of the day in Africa. So they brought in, they promoted conflicts and uh, tribal wars in Central Africa. Now, uh, here we are now going to look at a little bit of all the things or the map uh, that is uh, that shows the routes followed by the Portuguese, the, the Spanish, as well as the English explorers. Now, uh, here uh, we have North America, as you can see it here. We have Europe, Asia, Australia is here, and Africa is here. So we have different routes, as you can see here, is Spain, uh, Portugal is somehow here, Portugal. Then they were traveling all the way, as you can see in green here, it's a Vasco da Gama who traveled up to India. But it was not only Vasco da Gama, 
different people they also sell in different uh, ways so just as you can see here uh, they traveled in different routes so we talk of we'll be talking of Ferdinand Magellan he traveled again he traveled all the way he traveled from here 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 so here where you see here uh, dot, 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 here he's going this direction but this direction it's uh, what comes from here see here and come 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 from here so it was like Ferdinand Magellan his journey it completed the rounding of the globe using the sea they went uh, around the globe around the world using the sea because you can see started from here started from Portugal here or Spain uh, going down 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 here America reached South America they proceeded and went straight when they were going straight they found themselves coming from this direction here here again 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 africa africa until they reached there so that's how uh, the route of Ferdinand Magellan uh, was done so here you see britain is here there are some english some white people they were they embarked on the route from britain to north america here so they were embarking on the on this way again they were traveling in that way even up now it is a very big a very big or busy route here very busy route from britain to uh, North America or to USA they use that they are big ships they travel in that way that's where uh, the Titanic the big Titanic he was drawn in, in it was in that route as well so know it uh, uh, and many others also they traveled so uh, these are the routes in which the uh, explorers traveled